I would like to say uh, a special thank you to every one of you, uh, the community people, uh, the pastors. I see some pastors in uh, Marin County that are here, um, and the media people that have responded and uh, are here this uh, afternoon. We would like to thank you for your presence here. The reason why we are all here uh, this afternoon, and also I would like to say a special thank you to the young people we, uh, that are here today. And uh, we thank you for your time. The present and the future of Marin City. Um, we are here because of the incident that happened uh, Sunday, uh, last Sunday, uh, in Marin City. You are all aware of what happened that nearly, uh, not nearly, all of Marin City was closed down. And uh, we here today to speak a little bit about Shaka Grayson, who is a member of our church. And as uh, his shepherd, I feel the responsibility that we need to not only stand by him, but to say a little bit about him, uh, what we know about him, and to also express our concerns about what is going on right now. So let me introduce some of the people that are up here. Uh, we have on my right hand here is uh, attorney uh, Jonathan Matthews, who is a member of our congregation and is also a deacon at our church. Uh, when the police department decided that I couldn't see Shaka anymore, uh, he has been the one that's been a go-between between me and Shaka and he's going to speak a little bit about that. Uh, we also have one of our deacons, uh, uh, Deacon Regi Reginald Hairston, and he is also going to uh, speak. One of the major community uh, organizations here in Marin City is the Marin City CDC, and the executive director, I believe I'm using the correct title, is uh, Kenny Hassan, and she is going to speak on what uh, she knows of uh, Shaka Grayson and their relationship uh, with Marin City CDC. Let me start by speaking, and then I'll turn it over to the other speakers. Uh, first, the major concern that we have is that this investigation that's going on now about what happened is being done by the Novato Police Department. Uh, that is a big conflict of interest because the Novato Police Department has, as one of the dispatchers there, the wife of the policeman that actually shot Shaq. And that information I gathered from an article that was written in the Press Democrat. So I really believe that this investigation is starting on the wrong foot. And it is really important for us as community leaders, as uh, community partners, uh, people in the Bay Area. It shouldn't be just Marine City alone. Amen. People in the Bay Area should be concerned about what is going on right now. That's our first uh, major concern. We're also concerned about Shaka's physical condition because the shooting that happened looked like a shooting to kill. And uh, in the hospital, the doctor told me that Shaka's bone right here is all shattered. And uh, the nerve is not responding. And the kind of work he does, 
you know that that's, uh, that's really taking uh, the food out of his mouth and his children's mouth and everything. So we're concerned that even right now, we don't believe that they are giving him the full medical attention that he needs. We're also concerned that they're holding him, they haven't charged him. And they've been holding him uh, in jail. Uh, we, we, are, we, we believe this is just too long. And uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I know that you cannot just hold a man forever. Even though we already have a long list of witnesses, we would like to encourage the community, if there are people uh, who were there, witnessed everything, <clears throat> Shaka now has a team of public defenders, and I, and I mean a team. So uh, I believe three or four of them are here today. And uh, if you know of anybody, you know of uh, any information, and you would like to, you know, give your name so it'll become part of the body of uh, evidence or whatever they need to properly defend uh, Shaka. Uh, we will really, really appreciate that. So if there's anybody out there that was there, you saw something, you videotaped, you did, you used your cell phone, uh, and you would like to turn them over to his uh, attorneys we will really be very uh, appreciative of that. Also, we wanted uh, the public to know that our church, Village Baptist Church, uh, we have established a fund for him. Uh, while he is in jail, he can feed his little son, CJ. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, he doesn't miss the meal and he is well taken care of. And we want to you know, also take care of his family. Uh, as you all know, he also has a fiance. And we want to make sure that things are going well for the family. I baptized Shaka just a few months ago. Shaka is turning his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is doing well, in fact, if I don't see him during church service, I know something is wrong. So uh, I am really with him 110% and with his family. I want you to know that even the Sunday that this happened, I was not the one who preached at our church. But uh, one of our preachers that preached, her message was going through the storm. And one of the things she said, and Shaka was here listening to it, is if you're not just coming out of the storm, and you're not in a storm right now, you're about to go into one. So we know that not only are we with him, we know that God is with him. And the Bible says if God is for us, who can be against us. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, McKinney as a, to speak. And after that, uh, Jonathan Matthews will speak. And after him, uh, Reginald Gibbs. Thank you. I'm here just briefly to speak about Shaka's professional accomplishments. And because he worked with the Marin City CDC through this process, we're very familiar with those accomplishments. Uh, Shaka, you know, demonstrated great integrity and great commitment to furthering his professional situation and honoring and supporting his family. And he did that by going through a construction training program that he successfully completed and then moving on to an apprenticeship training program with the iron workers. This was significant because it meant that finishing that program would increase his salary significantly and put him on a road to even making better and better wages. So it was a lot of celebration and support for the great work that he did in furthering his professional career. 
uh, after successfully completing the first portion of the iron workers training, he was then selected to work on the Golden Gate Bridge. For those of you don't, that don't know it, he was actually working diligently on the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm -hmm. And we laughed about that because he had to manage his, his being up high mm -hmm. and what that felt like in terms of having to work you know, on the bridge. But he overcame those concerns, he came up, overcame those challenges, and was an exemplary worker and recognized to this day. I just met with the union this morning, and today they talk highly of Shaka. Mm -hmm. uh, the key thing I want folks to know is that when he checked in with us, it was always about I'm working and I'm taking care of my family. Those were the things he cared you know, so much about. And those are the things that we really shared in, in you know, really uh, celebrating. Um, the other thing I just want to say is just information. That just prior to this happening, he came to one of our, our, our program managers and asked for assistance in getting his um, insurance. And so we were able to provide the, the assistance in getting him insurance because he needed insurance for driving. And we just know you can't get insurance if you don't have a license. So just, you know, information's been out there. We can say he had a license recently because we provided the insurance, and the insurance company requires a license. So folks just should know that. So in ending this, I just want to say that our agency is full support of Shaka. We join the community in doing whatever we can do to support his family, to support him. And we join others in saying that you know, there needs to be, and we're already seeing it, but there needs to be a community response. Shaka is our Trayvon Martin. Shaka is our Oscar Brandt. And we have the opportunity to do some things while he's recovering that can make a difference for him and other young men that he, that look up to him that are impacted by his success. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Jonathan Matthews. Uh, I've been serving as a go-between uh, between the pastor and Shaka. And I don't want <clears throat> to uh, go on too long. I just want to reassure the community about a couple of things. That Shaka is, even though he's in some discomfort, he is strong. He's staying strong. Um, <clears throat> and that he has a legal team that is well qualified to take his case. And the other thing I just want to say is that um, <clears throat> often as a church, you seek and pray for justice, but sometimes you have to demand justice. So <clears throat> I want all of us to continue to demand justice for Shaka. Again, good afternoon. I greeted many of you a little bit earlier. My name is uh, Reginald Harrison. Uh, as I will share with you, I have the pleasure of being a deacon here at this church. Um, the reason why I have the pleasure of standing before you is because I'm just going to give you a brief kind of comment regarding uh, Shaka's character. Like many of you, I've gotten to know him um, and things of that nature. Uh, I've had the pleasure of being affiliated with this community, i.e. working or living for the last 24 years. Uh, after finishing up at UC Berkeley. So I'm just going to share with you, sometimes the perception is individuals in Marin City or somewhere affiliated with X number of people are not necessarily highly educated or something to that effect. So I just want to debunk that at this particular point. Um, I also had the pleasure of being there, as you've heard, Mr. Grayson recently, some months ago, changed his life around. Yeah. I was one of those that had the pleasure of literally being there in the water with him. When he went down, okay. he came back up. Uh, so um, that's another reason why I have the pleasure of standing here and sharing with you a little bit about his character, like many of you know his character. Um, just to echo some of the previous sentiments, he's a family man. Um, I've spent time with him. My family, we've spent time with him. I've spent time with him, not necessarily just here at the place most people would say, oh, well, church, everyone will be on their best behavior. I've spent time with him out at the basketball court. I've spent time with him at dinner and things of that nature. So I've gotten a chance to know him. And he truly is a family man. Uh, as many of you know, he has a beautiful little boy and that will share with you as a lovely fiance. Uh, I've spent time with that family, not only outside of church, but also in Bible study. You say to me, well, why do you even bring up Bible study? Because like some of you may know, Many people attend church on Sunday. 
and then they return to church to practice their faith the next Sunday. Well, Shaka has gone over and beyond that. We have Bible study where we continue to study our faith and grow. He's diligently there with his family. He's not saying, hey, you guys go, I'll see you when you come back. He's there. So again, I just wanted to share with the community, as many of you already know, what a wonderful person this gentleman is, attest to the fact that he's working very diligently and has worked very diligently at changing his lifestyle. And so with that said, we again appreciate all of you coming out to show your uh, solidarity uh, in this matter and your efforts. I think as the pastor has already pointed out, please uh, let us continue to support him and then knit together as a community and rally around him during this difficult time and especially for his family. Okay? All Thank right. you. As was expressed, uh, this is not really a place to, to vent. We just wanted the public to know what's happening with Shaka and uh, where it is right now and what we as a church, as a community, as his family want to do. So, but I'm still going to leave it open for questions. And since there are a lot of legal issues, I'm not going to be the ones answering the questions. So I'm, I'm going to uh, have uh, Jonathan come up and see if he can take any questions. Yes. Jonathan, are you planning to get any kind of a petition, or is there a petition going on now within our community? Uh, I am not aware of any individual petition at this point. I know that there are different efforts in the community, um, both related to this case, but also related to the larger issue of the police. Um, as we know, <clears throat> this was an, uh, Chaka was affected, but the whole community is affected. But this isn't the first time the shooting uh, itself was unprecedented, but the treatment of people in Marin City by the police is not unprecedented then. And so one thing that we do want to have happen out of this is to have improved relations. And if we have to change <clears throat> the way that things are structured to achieve that change, then so be it. And I know that there are efforts in that direction. Um, I know there are many different groups that are working on that right now. Uh, I myself know, and this is where I'm probably going to maybe disappoint some of you because I don't want to talk too much about the case at this point. We don't want to try the case in the public. Um, but let me do say, <clears throat> and, and, and it's not, believe me, I want to talk about this case as much as possible. But um, just for the sake of Shaka, we want to protect the information that's out there, and that's going to be coming forward. But, me, myself, no. But I know that his team is diligently working to uh, answer information. And if you know people that know something, contact the public defender's office in Marin County. What, what we know about the case so far is just the basic. There was a traffic stop. Uh, the officer says the driver charged him and he shot him. Are you disputing that? Are you saying that it happened? Are you disputing that? One thing I will say is that if you try to introduce a newspaper article in court, it's called hearsay, which means you can't necessarily believe everything that's printed. Um, again, because this is a, a developing case, I don't want to get into details, but I do believe that if the truth is allowed to come out, many of the things that we know now will be debunked later on. That's all I can say at this point. Um, I'm not concerned. Are you really a petition about the health, his health? Because with him being in that position with the pain, it affects his mental. Are you looking to have some kind of petition so we can have some doctors keep watch over you? You know, when you locked up and, you know, you said his arm is shattered. If you don't follow rules, he tend to punish you in those places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, his health was is, 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 I think, one of the most ongoing concerns that we have, especially since he's not, since he was transferred to, to the jail. 
from the hospital where he was first taken. So there, there is major concern. I have seen, I've, I've visited him, I've seen some improvement, but I've also seen signs that they're not doing all that they need to do. Um, so we are monitoring the situation. Um, again, I don't want to get too much into the details, but <clears throat> many of you know how many shots were fired. Many of you know some of the nature of what's happened to him. So a lot of what's happening with him, we won't really know till time in terms of how, um, how, how difficult or how extensive the damage is. Um, but, we, but what we do want to do is make sure that they're doing their job. When he asks for medication, that they respond in a reasonable amount of time. There was a statement made that he was the Trayvon Martin here. Do you think he was targeted because he was? Uh, I can't. I can't uh, look into the or read exactly what the officer was doing. Um, there's no way I can. There's no way I can. I think any of us can figure out what what he was thinking that day. But 10 shots at an unarmed man doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think it makes any sense to anybody in the community. Right now, he's in the hospital, but he's held in jail and has not been charged. At this point, he hasn't been charged. Well, at this point, again, we don't know what he's been charged with. So we don't know what exactly the district attorney is going to say at this point. So there's just a lot of details at this point that are sort of floating around. So until their charge is made and they've, um, you know, produced their evidence, it's it's really premature to get too much into those types of details at this point. But, but in terms of the fact that he did have a whole life. From what we know, yes. But again, like I said, we're still very early on this, on this stage. Yes? Has the officer been taken off Thank of you. duty so that um, other people in the community don't feel um, threatened by his um, hostile actions? At this point, we don't know the status of what's going on with that officer. Um, normally, I think and most departments have some type of protocol in terms of the situation. I think they usually tend to try and remove them from the situation while, you know, things are being investigated. But I don't know the specifics of what's going on right now with that officer. Uh, but what we do know, however, is that, in fact, that night, I left uh, the hospital at 2.30, 2 2.40 a.m. Uh, the police, the sheriff department called me to come back to Marine City because they wanted to do a CSI investigation. When I came back to Marine City, I went to the sheriff's station uh, to talk with them about uh, what they actually needed me for because they wanted to go into the house, but uh, they wanted me to be there since I knew who the owner of the house was. And I knew that, you know, from that uh, particular time, I was told that the Novato Police Department was in charge of the investigation. Immediately, I didn't feel very comfortable with that. Without even knowing the details of who worked for the Novato Police Department or whatever, I, I kind of had a suspicion of how Novato is. <laughs> the Novato Police Department. Amen. So, uh, but anyway, uh, later on, I read in the Press Democrat that uh, uh, the wife of the police that shot Shaka worked for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know that's conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. you know, so again, uh, that's one of the things if it's going to take petition, whatever, we're just asking that the Novato Police Department be removed right. from doing this investigation. Right. That there should be an independent investigator right. appointed. We're calling. We're calling on the Kamala Harris to to okay. come in and and investigate and make sure that things are going right. right. 
Because you can't ask the shooter to investigate the shooter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's ridiculous. And again, we're not in an area where there's one police department in a 400 mile area. There are many police departments that can take this off. When, when I hear a statement that says that you know, you know you're not comfortable with the bottle, there seems to have been a feeling that goes beyond this. Can you, can you talk to me what the relations have been between the police department and the, and the American community here in Why the past don't... and how they are now? I think, again, I think the, the uh, shock of shooting and I think other recent events have really stirred a nerve. Yes. It's almost like the clock's been turned back. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But I think really what's happening is that there are issues that haven't truly been dealt with. And so now we're just at the point where they surface and now we have to deal with them. Um, I don't want to get into specifics and, and name calling and things like that, but again, this shooting, I think is emblematic of a problem between the police and this community. That's gone way too long and it needs to stop. And that's why we're all here. Thank you. Uh, I don't know anything of anything like that at this point. I, I don't know. Um, you mentioned that the public defender's office was uh, representing Shaka, and I'm just wondering at this point, is there or is there a need for community residents to be able to contribute to contribute to his defense financially? Uh, absolutely. Uh, like the pastor talked about. Um, the shooting uh, affect Shaka not only in the legal sense, but in the sense of uh, his ability to make money for his family. Right. So this isn't just an issue of uh, representation, but this is an issue of helping to support his family while this is going on. Um, as you know, these cases take a long time. So we need support for a while, not only through the criminal process, but any other process that he might pursue. Yes? Because of his physical state, um, is there going to be a well, again, we don't, there's nothing, um, and again, you're getting into legal, some legal issues there. Um, there, because of a, oh, yes? I just want to say, uh, I'm David Brown from the Public Defender's Office, one of the defense team, and he's being held on a parole violation. And while that's pending, and that's a fairly short timeline, um, they don't—they can just hold them on that and don't have to make any decisions on the charges. But once that short timeline has passed, then the district attorney's office is going to have to make a decision whether to charge him with any crime or release him, depending on the outcome of the parole violation. So that's the procedural status now. He's being held on something procedurally, not just you know, in jail with nothing pending, so that, that seems to be the answer to some of the What questions. is that timeline? Um, he's supposed to get some uh, indication of what's going to happen within 10 days from when he was served with that, but um, you know, we're, we're representing him on the parole violation. Let me interrupt. We just heard Mr. Brown. I want you to be very careful. We don't want to bombard him with questions. Again, we want to stay a little bit orderly. We are happy that he's here. I'm just going to do it in a little bit orderly fashion. I think he and Pastor may have talked. If there's any change in the format here, those two will make that. But let's be very respectful of his presence. And let me just say without getting into specifics that people are working to try and speed things up so that the police department is in a situation where they can hold them for months and months. So there are efforts in that direction. This is to Mr. Brown. Uh, parole violation, you can do uh, how much at the minimum and how much at the most time? Um, I can answer some of these questions offline, but I really don't want to describe too much of um, Mr. Grayson's legal situation right now because um, we're working on it. We've got a team of people working on it. We have two lawyers and two investigators here working on the case, and I uh, prefer not to make any public statements about what's going on in the investigation that we're doing right now. 
Okay, we could talk later, but I also have another question. How would family be able to visit with him? Uh, I believe, well, he's currently being held at the jail. I, um, and I, I believe he's, <coughs> I, again, I, let me, for family, why, why don't your family come and talk with me after about that, okay. rather than me put that out in public? Just if so, you can just approach me after. Yes? My concern is the, <coughs> the community safety. I thought they was here for safety, control of the community, and to shoot in a body of a car don't mean that you're doing any safety to, for me. And my concern is by me driving down the road, if I had had a suspended license, would that mm. be the way that you would comprehend me? Well, again, I think there, again, there are a lot of questions that are raised by this. This is why we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to be able to wave a wand and make it all go away, but we know it doesn't happen. Yeah, okay. It happens by all of us being here, showing that we're behind Shaka, showing that we're watching what they're doing, and that they just don't have a carte blanche to do whatever they want. Yes, right. So it's 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 everyone getting together when there's an opportunity and showing support for him that we can reverse that kind of thing. Thank you, um, Attorney Matthew. I appreciate the press conference happening, and as a community, our coming together. I thank you so much for. Um, providing us with this and a place to share. Also, I'm concerned um, for Shaka, of course. You know, he's one of our own, and, and no matter how if anyone is, is mistreated in any way by uh, police or anyone else, I believe that that justice should happen. And I also was concerned as a resident here, and I was coming from my church that night as um, to enter, to go back into my home are needing to get there, and others that were needing to get there. And the way of the freeway on 101, all the high-powered rifles and all of that Thank going you. on, and the person that was driving me from my church, we were getting ready to enter, and then we see the gun, and it was like very distrustful for me. And then I had to end up in San Francisco for a couple of hours. I called the sheriff's department to see when can I enter that. And then I heard at another meeting at the CSD, um, board meeting that there were people had to walk on foot to come back in but yet the person didn't have um, wasn't armed I didn't understand that and it take that long to even take it. people had to walk with their children so that's a great concern too that for this community and I've observed <coughs> other things as well thank you thank you um, well I really want to thank Pastor for putting this together he put this together on about three days ago so I want to thank him for Giving, yeah. giving us the form for this. And um, again, that that was that Sunday was just very chaotic, I think, for everybody. Um, the pastor wanted to get here, but just what was going on down here, it was crazy, and it took him a while to, to decide when to come down here because of what was going on with all the police around here. And you can only imagine what Chaka was going through okay. uh, after what happened to him and seeing this community almost looking like a war zone. So there are a lot of questions, but and unfortunately these questions don't get answered right away, but we're going to work to have all these questions answered in time and to have everybody answer for what they did that day. Thank you. Yes? Uh, in light of all the evidence surrounding Chaka Grayson and what the evidence say that these charges against him, there is a legal team considering filing a violation of his civil rights. Because as we know, there's another side of that case too, because with the number of shots fired, with that amount of two really was a violation of civil rights attempted murder on behalf of the sheriff's department. Well, there are a lot of different processes going on right now. We're, we're merely dealing with the criminal process at this point. That's the most immediate issue that we're dealing with especially with, with Shaka being in custody right now. We want to, that's where I want to put our focus first, is on dealing with that first. But he is looking into all of those other other aspects. Again, unfortunately, things like this take time, and I think right now it's best for us to focus on dealing with the criminal process first, working as fast as we can to get some type of resolution as to what they're going to charge him with, get him out of custody. That's, that's where we want to work at first. But believe me, he's... He's looking at all those options. Yes.
you know, again, I don't know what the decision-making process was with the sheriff's department. Um, I guess apparently at some point they felt that he was in good enough shape to be transferred, but I again, you'd have to ask them uh, about that decision because um, um, I, I, I don't know that I would have released him, but that's up to them. I don't want to. I don't want to put words in their mouth as to why they did that. Uh, can they get an injunction and transfer him back to Marin General and holding their his sad music and holding their parole leash for about at least two weeks and to till that stuff is uh, you know administered to him because he's not gonna get good good treatment in there. Well, again, we're concerned about the treatment that he's getting, and we're working, we're working, monitoring what's going on with his treatment, and we're working as fast as we can so that we can get him, you know, out of that situation. So we're, we're we are working on that. This is going to be the last question. I'd like to ask why an ambulance was never called. Good question. Uh, ambulance was never called. I, I never seen an ambulance throughout the whole day. Again, if there's someone a lot had of been shot, about went you know. on that were very fishy. Um, I know the pastor was part of the process that night to um, help safely return Shaka. Okay, I'm not I'm not sure exactly the specifics of the question, but just to let you know that myself and Pastor Marcus Small was part of the negotiation between Shaka and the police. So after we got there. We asked the sheriff that the major concern we have right now is an ambulance. And they agreed that they will call in an ambulance. Uh, and I was in the ambulance with him all the way to the, uh, to the hospital. Okay, so um, again, um, I want to really express our thanks and our appreciation to the community. You've come out today at a very short notice. And I, you know, when I was preparing for this, I called a lot of people. I found out how difficult it is to even get TV stations. But, you know, we have the IJ, we have uh, uh, Channel 7 here, and we have uh, I believe the Marine County Post is also here. I saw them coming a little bit late, but they're here. Uh, what I want to do is to thank you to say, let's not allow this to be the last time Amen. that we get together as a community and plan and say enough is enough. Let's stop it right here. Right. God bless you. Thank you very much.